Mr. President, distinguished members of the court, it's a great honor and privilege to appear before you and to represent the League of Arab States. The Palestinian people have been denied the exercise of their legal right to self-determination through the more than century-long violent, colonial, racist effort to establish a nation-state exclusively for the Jewish people in the land of mandatory Palestine. When this began after the First World War, the Jewish population of that land was 11%. Forcibly implementing Zionism in this demographic context has necessarily involved the extermination or forced displacement of some of the non-Jewish Palestinian population, the exercise of domination over and subjugation, dispossession and immiseration of remaining non-Jewish Palestinians, the emigration to that land of Jewish people, regardless of any direct personal link, and the denial of Palestinian refugees the right to return, all operating through a racist distinction privileging Jewish people over non-Jewish Palestinian people. This has necessitated serious violations of all the fundamental Jos Kogan's and Erga Omne's norms of international law the right of self-determination, the prohibitions on aggression, genocide, crimes against humanity, racial discrimination, apartheid and torture, and the core protections of IHL. Today, I will address, first, violations of international law arising out of the regime of racial domination, apartheid, perpetrated against the Palestinian people across the entire land of historic Palestine. And then, second, the existential illegality of Israel's occupation of the Palestinian Gaza Strip and West Bank, including East Jerusalem, since 1967. As a necessary prerequisite, I must begin with this special right granted to the Palestinian people in the League Covenant. The legal right of self-determination of the Palestinian people originates in the sacred trust obligations of Article 22 of the League Covenant, part of the Versailles Treaty. Palestine, an A-class mandate under British colonial rule, was, after the First World War, supposed to have its existence as an independent state provisionally recognised a sui generis right of self-determination. The UK and other members of the League Council attempted to bypass this, incorporating the 1917 Balfour Declaration commitment to establishing a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine into the instrument stipulating how the mandate would operate. However, the Council had no legal power to bypass the Covenant in this way. It acted ultra virus, and the relevant provisions were legally void. There was and is no legal basis in that mandate instrument for either a specifically Jewish state in Palestine or the UK's failure to discharge the sacred trust obligation to implement Palestinian self-determination. After the Second World War, a self-determination right applicable to colonial peoples generally crystallized in international law. For the Palestinian people, this essentially corresponded to and supplemented the pre-existing covenant right regarding the same single territory the 1947 proposal to partition Palestine was contrary to this, the Arab rejection and affirmation of the legal status quo. In 1948 then, Palestine was legally a single territory with a single population enjoying a right of self-determination on a unitary basis. Despite this, a state of Israel specifically for Jewish people was proclaimed in 1948 
by those controlling 78%, more than three quarters of Palestine, accompanied by the forced displacement of a significant number of the non-Jewish Palestinian population, the Nakba catastrophe. This illegal secession was an egregious violation of Palestinian self-determination. Israel's statehood was recognized and Israel admitted as a UN member despite this illegality. Israel is not the legal continuation or successor of the mandate. This violation of Palestinian self-determination is ongoing and unresolved. Two key elements are, first, Palestinian people not displaced from the land proclaimed to be of Israel in 48 and their descendants have been forced to live as citizens, presently they constitute 17.2%, of a state conceived to be of and for another racial group under the domination of that group necessarily treated as second class because of their race. Second, Palestinian people displaced from that land and their descendants cannot return. These are serious breaches of the right of self-determination, the prohibitions of racial discrimination and apartheid, and the right of return. They must end immediately. As if this All right, so I just want to ask a couple of questions real quick for a few friends. Yeah, a few friends would like to know a few things, all right, from what we just heard. Okay, now, I think there's like four or five more minutes to it, but you get the gist of what he just said, right? Right. So, is it now safe to call Israel a racist, oppressive, fascist, apartheid state? Is it safe to do now? Because the International Court of Justice just did it. So, does that mean that I can now say that the state of Israel is a Zionist, fascist, racist, apartheid state. Can I do it too? Or, or just the International Court of Justice can do it without fear of being labeled anti-Semitic? Right? Does that mean that Palestinians can now call the state of Israel a Zionist, racist, oppressive, apartheid state? without being labeled anti-Semitic. What about black Americans? Can black Americans say it? That the state of Israel is a fascist, Zionist, oppressive, apartheid state? Yeah, because black Americans, we feel as though the racist, fascist, oppressive Policies coming out of Israel and the Zionist political lobbies are targeting black Americans right here in America. APAC. Yeah. And the global black reputation as violent, lazy criminals, deadbeat hookers, hoes and drug addicts is a product of the Jewish run and owned mainstream media. Or is that too soon? Huh? We got to tackle one issue at a time. That's that's going a little bit too far right now, right? We, we're just dealing with the issue in Palestine, right? Yeah. Yeah, Zionists are racist against the global black diaspora. Can I say that now without being labeled anti-Semitic? Millions of black Americans, millions of Africans feel as though Israel is a racist, Zionist, oppressive, apartheid state. So are, are millions of us wrong and are millions of us anti-Semitic? And if Israeli Zionism is racist and oppressive, 
is this global Zionism or just in Palestine? Oh, that's a good question right there. Yeah. Yeah. And if Israeli Zionism, right, which the International Court just said that the state of Israel is practicing Zionism, which is a racist, oppressive, fascist government, right? So if Israeli Zionism is a racist, oppressive, fascist, apartheid state, is this global Zionism or just in Palestine? Does Israeli Zionism stop its criminal activity once it leaves Israel? Or are they as corrupt and oppressive everywhere they go? America, Europe, Africa, hmm? or, or is it just in Palestine? Is it just in one place, nowhere else? We know it's not in Asia. Yeah, now y'all understand why the Chinese is communist, right? They don't want America shit over there. And they want to make sure they stopped all Jewish Zionist influence in their country. They wouldn't even own their own media. Now I'm curious, what happens to all the people who were labeled anti-Semitic for calling Zionism what it is? Jewish National Socialism or Nazism. Have it your way. Yeah, what happens to them? What happens to all the people you labeled anti-Semitic for calling Israel a Zionist, repressive, apartheid state that was committing genocide? Hey, do they get their jobs back? Do they get a public apology? Hmm? Who would have ever thought that the victims of the Nazis would become Nazis themselves? Hmm? Who the thunk, right? Yeah, so are they unanti-Semitized? Are they now vindicated because the International Court of Justice now said what everybody already knows? Is Kanye West still anti-Semitic? saying his lawyer is Jewish, his doctor is Jewish, his accountant is Jewish, his manager is Jewish, his agent is Jewish. Is Kanye West still anti-Semitic or is that too soon? Is Kyrie Irving still anti-Semitic or is that too soon? What about Farrakhan's secret? All right, that's way too soon. I'm sorry. I ain't even mean that. All right. Yeah. What happens to the hundreds of peoples you have labeled anti-Semitic and they have lost everything they had? Hmm? Mainly their name. Which is everything. Your name is your currency. Right? Do any of these people get reimbursed with back pay? With interest? <laughs> no? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. We want to know. Some of us are confused, okay? We don't want to start tossing around titles and the next thing you know, hey, <laughs> we get the scarlet letter. You know what that is, right? Anti-Semite. So let, let me tell you, Zionist Puppet Master, something. The advocacy work that you did for black Americans with your demonic NAACP your organization of niggas, alligators, apes, coons, and possums was over a hundred years ago. And it's gatekeeper central. The common black man has nothing to do with that organization. And it ultimately doomed our community. Yeah. We fell for it hook, line, and sinker. All your political hijinks. The Democratic Party and the liberal ideal is the Zionist Party. You have used the black community as the tip of despair to do your bidding for the last hundred plus years. 
You only advocated for integration for us, but no real purposeful tangibles. You used our political immaturity of coming right out of slavery. We got out of slavery 1862-63. Here y'all was in 1901 already starting an organization called the NAACP. Oh, you mighty benefactor, you. You knew we didn't know no better. So you posed as an advocate for our rights and you let us right to the fire. You tell us to <clears throat> you tell us to practice liberalism while you practice Zionism. Yeah, so while white supremacy was distracted with the civil rights movement and black militants waiting on a black messiah, you crept in through the back door and circumvented the entire fucking system. I would applaud. I really would. It's genius. It's genius. I see why you get all the Nobel Peace Prizes. So while, while the, the, the Gentile was so busy with his foot on our neck, he, he forgot to look at his shoulder and what was going on behind the scenes. And now that he done turned around, he don't got no control over his own government. Now he out here stuck, fucked up. Talking about, yo, DEI. <laughs> you done DEI'd the white man out of control of his own country. I, I applaud that. That shit was genius. You DEI'd. The white racist patriarch, the wasp, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant who is racist towards you, you DEI'd him right out of his position of power and you let immigrants and women do it. The first tip of the spear was black Americans. You used us first. But now that you got all these other immigrants here now, yeah. You think Indian immigrants take kindly to white folk having a shit fit because Marvel adds an Indian superhero? I let Indian people see how white folks feel about them. Oh, nobody won't go see no Kamala. Nobody won't give a fuck about no Indian superhero. They don't respect your culture. None of that shit. If they show a Hispanic superhero, you notice white people don't go see that shit, right? They don't want to see that shit. So y'all going to find out the hard way. But is everybody who lost their YouTube channels or their social media platforms or their jobs in general now going to be reinstated and reimbursed? Hmm? And get their money and their social currency back. Do your fake anti-Semitic labeling. Your heavy-handed fake anti-Semitic labeling. Yeah, anti-Semitism is a boogeyman. That's all it is. And hopefully that Nazi boogeyman will soon be put to rest for the sake of the entire planet. I don't want to be ruled over by Jews or Gentiles. 